it's live. Is it live? Let's make sure it is live. I hope everyone's had a good day. Day two. <laughs> it is live. Uh, if you can hear me fine, can you leave a comment just so I know? Wow, there's a lot of people watching live straight away. Cool. I'm sorry I'm running a little bit late because. Yes, I can hear myself. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late. Um, my story time for telling stories to my two lovely kids kind of dragged on. Um, there was a missing cat. And yeah, I'll make up beautiful stories for them. Um, so other than whiskey, the stories I tell about other things as well, they all start with once upon a time, there was a small village called Hamilton because I live in a small village called Hamilton. So I hope you're good. Like last night, there's no agenda, there's no script, nothing. But um, I got a few angry chat messages <laughs> after last night's broadcast, uh, especially from LinkedIn, about all these people wanting to buy bottles of whiskeys that I was drinking, but they're not for sale because, well, they're gone for now and they're in my personal collection. So I thought, to be fair, I'll talk about three whiskeys a little bit, but just a normal chat like last night. Uh, but if you talk about three whiskeys, people can buy because I end up talking about them. Obviously, I like them. That's why I drink them. I do not bring whiskeys into my own home that I do not want to drink. Um, they go into a general pool called Tasting Stock. Um, but I'll talk about three whiskeys, but other stuff in between. And um, if anyone has any comments, questions, you know, I'll give a shout out or try and answer any questions. So day two, um, I don't know how it was for you guys. Seemed like a pretty normal day to me. Um, obviously, not being able to work properly is um, affecting some of people's sanity. That's where hopefully the liquor a little bit's helping. But we don't want it to be the dependent for our sanity. Obviously, you know, you're still allowed to, dare I say, go out for a walk or a bike ride around the neighborhood. I read online some guy ran a 50 kilometer ultra marathon round around his house, which is incredible. And what's more incredible, he was inspired by another man who ran a similar distance of 42 kilometer, a full marathon running in his balcony. I mean, I didn't see the part how big that balcony is but it cannot be more than 100 meters. So 100 meters, time team time for 420 laps off the world's biggest balcony. Uh, I hope that man has some whiskey because, um, yeah, it will drive you to drink. So the first one I was going to have tonight was the Tam Du 12-year-old. Um, I don't know if any of you have. It's not very widely available in New Zealand, unfortunately. Um, we don't really see a lot of it, but this is the new shade bottle they do which is quite pretty actually i like it i like whiskey companies that spend a little bit more on uh packaging sometimes you can present a sub par whiskey or not such a nice whiskey and put it into a pretty bottle and it's passable but tandu is really nice and i really like this packaging for some reason i cannot find this beautiful box that comes in it's massive but it's it's gone i don't know where it is but um if you click on the link on i'll put all the links up this time i'm doing it properly um if you click on the link you'll see the product photo that it comes in this beautiful box and what i also like it there's like a little locking thing in here which holds a uh, bottle in the case beautifully in place showing the emblem and all that kind of stuff which is quite nice. And um, the other reason why I like this whiskey is it's sherry cask age, 100% sherry cask age. That's where the color is coming from. It's not overly deep, but it's bottled at 43%. And in yesterday's video, I shared extensively how I personally enjoy or prefer whiskeys that are minimum 46% or higher than that and prefer cask strength whiskeys, depending on how long the age is. But um, there are certain whiskies that are pure magic, even at 43 or 40%. And this is definitely one of them, bottled 43%. And um, yeah, there's lots of magic happening in here. Wow. 
So today um, I brought out my um, <laughs> Denver and Lily glass. Um, I forgot to put a link for it, but you'll find it. We sell them on APM and we sell a lot of them. Um, this is their proper whiskey glass, which I was saying last night that um, actually, how about we do this? <laughs> There's a little bit of Talisker from last night. Smoky still left there. I'm trying to do something with it, but I'll explain that later. So these are two different glasses that do. This is the whiskey glass, and that's the bourbon one. And if you look at the shape, I mean, very similar. This one's a bit rounder, bigger. This one's a bit narrower. But the key difference, this is this is very heavy. It's got this big glass bottom here, almost like a paperweight, which I really like because, you know, I like holding heavy glasses. But um, for purposes of drinking Scotch whiskey and drinking neat Scotch whiskey, this is the preferred one because um, for nosing, this is just phenomenal. Wow. Beautiful. And like, as I said last time with the other glass, you know, you know your whiskey, you know it from the top, maybe from the middle, but not as much as the bottom. The third whiskey I'm going to bring out tonight is 59%, and that will probably exemplify why you don't know it from the bottom, because it will literally burn your nostrils. Um, yeah, I will. Cool. I'm just going to have a quick browse of if there's any comments or questions so far. Carl Drummond, you can, yeah, you will. Thank you, brother. Yep, I've got a face for radio. You are 100% true. What's the difference with these and uh, Gin Denver and Lighty? Now, the Gin Denver and Lighty uh -huh. is like that, much fatter and bigger. And hey, look, dare I say, and I love the boys, Denver and Lighty. I had a good four hour podcast with them. Um, it kind of feels like it's another glass to add to the range. Maybe Dan will be watching this and tell me I'm an idiot and he explained to me how it's different. But it just seems like this one, a little bit bigger, and obviously you need it to be bigger because you're going to mix it with tonic or whatever you drink your gin with. So you need it to be a bit bigger. But in terms of if you're going to be mixing a drink, I don't know why a glass in particular would help with it. I guess it could be more of a presentation. But look, it's there. What intrigues me is they also have a tequila one now. Which we don't stock yet, but um, I'll try and get some, get some in. Cool. And what are the team up to on LinkedIn? Are they watching tonight? I can pick up the phone. Hang on. Oh, I hope you're watching and drinking some whiskey. Um, wherever you are. Hi, Jared. Hi, Cash. Hi, Pamela. Hi, hello. Hi, Daryl and Tim Humphreys. Yay. Wow. <laughs> so I said that last night, right? And I say that all the time. If you've been to one of my tastings, I say that. Well, I say that some people get drunk and don't listen to me, but that's fine. Um, doing it this way, I don't have to deal with that aspect of it. So if you're getting drunk at home, please be careful. But at least I don't have to deal with you because um, I've been a retailer for a very long time. And doing the tastings I enjoy, I just, I'm allergic to drunk people because um, I, in particular, do not get drunk. I have a happy line and I stay just below it if I can. Uh, people go past it when you're doing tastings because you're in a pub or a restaurant and in between the five or six samples we give them, they're having a few craft beers or wine, dare I say. So coming back to the whiskey, 43%. Sherry cask and on the nose, I get a lot of nutty character initially. I don't know why. Like a hazelnut sort of character. And then the sweetness of the sherry and a little bit of spice. The cinnamon starts to come through. Really nice. And it lures you in. I mean, I'm very sorry. There's no way for me to share this beautiful smell with you right now. But if you get your chance, you know, um, one thing I want to say, though, is um, maybe not now, obviously, because all uh, on-premise or hospitality, as you might say in your country, is closed down. But one of the best ways to get to understand or try whiskey is go to a whiskey bar and order three, four different drams. It might sound a more expensive way of doing it, but you can try that particular whiskey for 10 12 13 bucks, hopefully, um, without committing to a $120, $130 bottle. Um, just 
just the top. Oh, you can notice this forever. Beautiful. And like I said before, anything and everything you can see behind me or off camera is stuff I drink and I enjoy. Um, I do not bring anything home that I'm not in love with that can stay in tasting stock. Mm. I apologize. Oh, wow. I apologize if um, you find it odd that I keep looking at my phone because the way I've set it up, my laptop's there, so I can't see your comments. So I've got to keep looking at this. Oh, someone's ordered some alcohol. What have you ordered? I like doing this because this is the time of night orders come in and I'm doing the video and people are buying from us. Someone's bought a Dubliner Irish whiskey liqueur. Thank you, Leanne. Oh, I think I know Leanne. Do I? I better not say what place this is. No, no, this is not one of those moments. This is because I know a Leanne out that way from doing tastings at Ohakia Air Force Base. All right. What are people saying? What are people up to on 8 p.m. Facebook page? So it's going live there too. People are live. They're watching. Oh, quite a few of them are. What are you saying? Hi, Hayden. Thank you for watching again, buddy. I know we have talked about it, but we'll do the video together really, really soon. Thank you, Vane. Mate, I love Tam Do. I've got a very old Tam Do, a 20-year-old, maybe. Well, I'm here for 28 days by the sound of it, or maybe longer. I'll bring the 20 year old out one day. It's my 40th birthday tomorrow. I love your show. Oh, thanks, Caleb. Happy birthday for tomorrow, mate. Birthday in isolation. Um, how to say it? Because yesterday I shared that it's my daughter's birthday, and um, I felt it was kind of a weird way of binding me in the house. Because, dare I say, man, I, I don't want to say sound condescending, but. If it wasn't because of that, I would have come home around 6, 6.30 after work. But yesterday, I got to spend quite a lot of time with her. And hopefully, you're isolating with people you love. Hopefully, you can spend a special birthday with them. And I hope you have some good whiskey in hand um, to sort of bring the 40th in. Congratulations again, man. And everyone, comment. Happy birthday to Caleb. 40, wow. Wow. I guess one thing you could defend was case that at 40, 43%. And I always say during the tastings, bulk of the population abuses whiskey because you can put any amount of whiskey in their glass and they will knock it back at the same speed. If it be at 40% or 43 or 60%, um, they'll knock it back at the same speed. So in a weird way, stuff watered down to 40, 43% worked really really good for that kind of part of drinking community because yeah what i'm going to bring on at number three is not for drinking fast it's just to be savored it's to slow the drinking down mm. wow love that whiskey and i've had it open for quite a long time now this is bottle number three and it's only traveled to there like, or even on the finish, it's sort of like baked apple, the sweetness. There's not as much spice, you know. It's not kind of like um, the abela cinnamon and pepper. It's quite gentle. Didn't quite make me crackle. I think the next one will, um, which is this one. I don't know if you can see it properly. Can you? Yep. Hi, Scott. I hope you're drinking something interesting. Not a lot left in there because I've enjoyed the hell out of this one. So this is the Glen Goyne, the Legacy Series, which is, don't ask me why, but, um, don't ask me why, mate, but um, the Legacy Series, it's a series. They're going to do more. This is the first edition, uh, which is heavily sherry, 100% sherry cast age whiskey. Bottled at 48, yep, non-chill filtered, 
And please, somebody confirm it to me. Is it no added color? Where are you? There's lots of information on these boxes. They're just not pretty. Yep, here we go. Natural color. What they don't reveal, though, is the age, obviously. Um, don't say. No, it doesn't reveal. Um, but it's the Legacy Series. It's 100% sherry cast gauge. That's the color. Actually, I'll put in the glass, then you can see. Like the Tam 2, it's not very deep in color. And that is because different sherry cars give different level of color. But also depends on uh, how long they're going to be in there. And I'm more than happy to oh, it's here somewhere. Where did my Brooklady bottle go? The dark color. Oh, it's gone. It's probably in the other room. But um, that one's aged in the Oloroso sherry cask for 14 years, and it's dark. You know. Mm -hmm. Dark as the back of this phone. It's just black. It's like Coca-Cola color, which is weird. You know, how can a 14 years is not a long time. How can a 14-year-old Sherry Cast whiskey be so deep in color? But that's when you start to think about these kind of things. You know, you've got a single cast whiskey. That's what that one is. And where it was in the warehouse, you know, at what height and this kind of stuff. It's you gotta be a real fanatic. Or like that says, what does it say? Let's <laughs> see if I can get that right. Oh, no, my hands. You can see whiskey nut in the middle. Um, you got to be whiskey nut to start to think about whiskey that much. So that's the color on it. If you can see it, it's quite cool. All right. I'm going to go high tech and see if I can bring comments up here instead of looking on my phone. What does Scott say? Glenn Frick 21, mate. Can I say, can I say, I've had the utmost pleasure of drinking Glenn Frick 21, amongst other things, at the board table at Glenn Frick Distillery, where the original owners, the family members, still sit down to make decisions around the company. I've drunk Glenn Frick 21 there. I don't know how you can beat that. That'd be probably one of the most important tables I've drunk whiskey on. I mean, this is just a cheap table from warehouse, but the other one was next level. Glen 21, 26 that day. Um, a car sample of 15 year old Glen Project 20, and another whiskey that I forget. And then heaps of car samples while the warehouse uh, tour. I don't know how you beat that, but I'm just gonna quickly see if I can bring a comments from other places. Yes, this is like magic. Ooh, you're valid, Scott. That's good, eh? That's good. Cool. No, I can't. I'm not very hard tech. I'm just a simple guy. It's not gonna behave. Come on. Nah, that's all right. I'll do the rounds again. Have a look. If someone knows something about an app called StreamYard that I'm using, can you please tell me when I'm finished how I could maybe flip through more efficiently? Right. Hey, Chris. Hey, Tim. Hey, Dominic. Is that Hibiki in the background? Over there. Yeah, that's Hibiki, buddy. Uh, that mo has to go. John, just give it up, mate. Give it up. The mo is staying. It's here. Uh, the people have spoken, and my customers and well wishers. Clearly, you're not a well wisher, but you are a good customer. But you are a very good friend as well. The mo is not going anywhere. It's staying here. Cool. And Andrew's watching. Hi, Andrew. What is LinkedIn up to? Hi, Ricky. You're calling. Oh, hi, Dion. Hi, Vanit. All right. So I drink some of this. Let's try some of this. 48% sherry cast. Hey, look, I said at the start, there's no script. I'm just rambling. Thoughts are coming to head. I'm reading stuff and I'm responding to it. So if you're finding this very hard to watch, you're welcome to leave. This is not one of those um, sit down, here's the three whiskers, here's the testing notes, and oh, yeah, goodbye. See you. That's not what this is about. 
Nice. Little bit of spice. A lot more spice than the um, Tam Tu. Wow. So try it. Okay, I'll try it. Because you guys want me to. Mmm. So the key difference, and this one can come back, but palette is on fire. It's oily. It's making me crackle. Huge difference. 43%, 12 year old, undisclosed age. We're guessing this is 10 to 12 anyway. But a 48% on the palette feels so much more powerful, so much more oily. You know, it's all over the palette. And my taste receptors are responding to it. Could be just me, because there are some amazing blogs written by people who know about whiskey a lot more than me. And they say, hey, chill filtration, being below 46 percent makes no difference. But I've drunk a fair amount of whiskey in the last little while. And sometimes you can tell the non-chill filter being at 46 or above, excuse me, makes a huge difference. It's a little bit of like mandarin or creamy character. This is a bit of creamy character. And I always get that with Glen Goins. Um, there's a sort of underlying buttery, <laughs> creamy note. Really nice. It's making me crackle. I'm going to set up a new Instagram handle calling whiskeys that make me crackle. All right. Could you please comment if you tried either one of those whiskeys before? The first two, which is the Tamdu, 12 year old, and uh, Ken Goin Legacy Edition 1. I wonder if the Edition 2 is out because we always get stuff late. And with this closure now, I think it's going to be even later, but we'll see. This is very important. If you're going to be enjoying your whiskies at home, as much as I do, you've got to have the waters. Don't be afraid to drink water. All right. Number three and the last one is this tiny, tiny amount. Tiny. And I'm not ashamed to bring it up on camera like that. Tiny amount of Glengoin pasture in because I have loved the shit out of it. Look at that. All gone. So this is uh, Glen Gwen Castrant Batch 7. I'm going to allow myself a tiny bit because I'm going to do a proper YouTube review as well of it still. So this is the Castrant Batch 7. You are Batch 7, aren't you? Yes, 58.9%. They don't tell you what sort of cast. Look at that color, a bit lighter and pale. I mean, if you are a whiskey connoisseur of any description, you can probably tell bourbon cast, not much sherry cast. And um, I mean, it's just fantastic whiskey. 58.9. Anything on there that I missed? Natural color. I assume that. Has any of you tried, tried any of the Glengoins before? I remember, who's the lady friend? Um, she really enjoyed Glengoin. We used to do running together. I forget her name. I remember her telling me that she really loved Glengoin. And she put me onto it. Because um, I've tried it before, but not as much. Um, not as much enthusiasm. But now I've been trying some amazing stuff. Hi, Telly. Hi, Jared. I've said hi to hello already. Hi, Andrew. Ricky, done, you guys. Cool. Oh, someone's ordered some stuff. Please pause. Jameson Irish Whiskey, Shivas Regal, 12 year old liter bottle, absolute vodka, and Gordon's gin. Thank you, Mr. A. 
I don't want to say names anymore. Gonna maybe put some boys in an awkward position with the wife. What are you doing buying alcohol during the lockdown? Um, hi, Mark. You love can do, Mark. I know. Glenn Frederick 15, one of our first scotches. Something I always find myself buying another bottle of. Mate, full disclosure, Glenn Frederick, I love the 12. 18, I love it. Beautiful, nutty character. The 15, I just never understood. I find it so underwhelming. I don't know why. You know, I love the 12 as a good, stable single mom. You know, it's so competitive 70 bucks, 65 bucks. Or whatever is in duty free. Um, and the 18, I find phenomenal. But the 15, it's just, I don't know. And it's so weird. Everyone I speak to highly raise about 15 and 12, well, and then 18, too expensive. But the 15, I just never have warmed up to it. In saying that, I have drunk some car strength 15 year old, as I was saying before, um, at Glenfrey Distillery. And maybe that kind of pushed me further away from it because I tried this fantastic just under 60% 15 year old at Castrum and now to drink the 40% one it's just feels a little bit underwhelming but please Daryl if you're watching here's a statement keep buying Glenn for 15 if it makes you happy keep doing it cool one of my staff is watching as good someone's uh, watching and learning about <laughs> whiskeys right Cool. All right. Well, let's get into this one. So, bottle of 58.9%. What I like about this whiskey in particular is the length. And that's not just because of the ABV. I mean, it's very high 58.9%. You can drink 58.9% vodka and it will burn your palate and you will remember that for a long time. It's going to happen. There's not going to be a lot of flavors, maybe a little bit of ripe banana or whatever. But it will burn your palate and you will remember that for a long time. But a good, interesting whiskey with a long length intrigues me because as it's lingering on your palate, um, there's different flavor notes that come up slowly from back and front of the palate or even mid palate and keep rolling around. And I'm quite keen to get into it now. Wow. It's funny I said bananas, but this is loads and loads of ripe banana straight on the nose. And that creamy Glen Gwynn character, how did they do it? Mm. Wow, so creamy. Wow. So this was the whiskey that I was going to exemplify why the Demerlady glass and how it works if you know it's from top, middle, and bottom. So I'll, I'll give it a go, see what happens. So on the nose, it's coming to me. It's okay. No one's attacking my nose. That's absolutely fine. Beautiful, creamy, vanilla, buttery notes are coming up. No spice. That's what kind of alludes to it that it's a bourbon cask. All right, mid-palate, things are still okay. 58.9%. <laughs> and at the bottom, it hits you, the vapor, 58.9. Quite brutal. And that's what, like, um, I was John commented about my mo, but dare I say, I was part of a video chat before this video where John was drinking out of a straight tumbler that we drink cups of tea out of, or maybe tomato juice. I don't know, not a whiskey glass, but maybe it is a whiskey glass because for years we've been going to bars and restaurants serving us very expensive whiskey, dare I say, in a massive tumbler shaped like that. I mean, shame on you if you're still doing that because you need, if you're going to buy an interesting drum, you need at least a proper shaped glass, you know, so you can nose your whiskey. But I suppose that kind of helps prove my point why people drink too much and too fast. There's zero appreciation, you know, from the server to the drinker, straight in, give us another one. Shouldn't be like that. You've been in a good glass, at the least a $10 Glencairn glass, which we sell. So you can slow the process down, um, appreciate it, be with the whiskey. I mean, I've been rambling on for a long time, still haven't tasted it. That's fine because I've been nosing in between and that should give you some pleasure. Now, like, even just as I pass my nose, honey and that ripen, yeah, I mean, really beautifully. 
Wow. All right, I'll give it a go. Mmm. <laughs> so thick. You can chew it. Really oily. Wow. <laughs> it's making me a flustered because it's very high in alcohol and it's hitting me now. Quite powerful. Loads and loads of vanilla. It's kind of creamy character. Almost found a little bit of sort of tropical fruit, just a little. But otherwise, loads of vanilla, a hint of honey. Quite milky smooth. You know, it's really good. There's no spice, hardly any spice. I mean, that's just beautiful. I mean, dare I say that is 145 bucks, 150 versus the Nadura Glen Levitt. You can see it. Which is also cast strength, is also batch. Um, it is. I'll bring it out. Let's do it. Let's do it side by side. But that retails for 100 or 110 bucks. It's in every liquor store. We sell obviously quite a bit of it. Versus that, which is no one knows about Glen Goyne. But let's see on live what that versus that feels like. And I'll try my best not to put one or the other one down. Let's see. Mm. And it's not fair to compare them because the whiskeys differ from different distilleries significantly because um, that's a Highland single malt. It's a grassy, easy drinking space side was supposed to be. So this one's bottled at 59.8 batch as well. Guessing being Glen Levitt is a bit bigger batches, but this one was 58.9, so 1% more alcohol. Very light in color, very, very light, very grassy. All right, let's give that a go. Hardly any color at all. Young whiskey, but a car strength, um, which is very generous to Glen Levitt. See, quite fresh in the nose, and I suppose Glen Levitt is supposed to be like that, really fresh. Just a bit of apple. Green apple is a sharp. It is creamy as well. I mean, I guess being a bourbon cast, a, big, a little bit of buttery, creamy note. Nice. It's a little bit of ripe banana as well. But on the nose, from the bottom of the... <laughs> it's fun to do that sometimes just to remind yourself how you could be nosing your whiskey completely wrong and be blown away by it if you're a novice drinker you get this expensive whiskey from us at 8 p.m and arrives to you in a courier and then you put in a hopefully proper glass you can go to the nose and go whoa that is burning me well now you hopefully know and i'll keep exemplifying it as i'm doing these videos why you should not nose your whiskey from the Bottom part. Mm. Mm. Very creamy. lot more tropical sort of fruit character <laughs> my palate's on fire two back-to-back cast red whiskeys you are going to take off so you probably don't want to do too much of it at home it's quite nice making me crackle really nice a little baked apple as well quite nice moment of truth 
hundred, hundred five dollars, or maybe hundred ten bucks versus one forty, one fifty. Small batches, people don't know about it. Available a lot, lots of different batches. I don't know. Would you pay the extra forty bucks? I would, because I want to try something different. Lot more creamier, buttery character, really rich. This seems lighter, a bit grassier, maybe a lot easier to drink. Uh, you could try and make an interesting cocktail with it too, because it's quite high in ABV. And I'm pretty sure some bartenders are probably already doing it. Mm. Quite nice. Very, very nice. All right, the video is getting a bit long. So I'm just going to bring back the little glass that is hiding off camera, which is this one here. I'm just going to swap this one because I'm going to come back to this tomorrow now. Hopefully I'll remember to. But there was this bad boy, which I drank last night, Talisker, which is Andrew's bottle, um, who purchased this amazing 30-year-old uh, Talisker from us in, like many of our other customers said, hey, if you want to, uh, and Andrew's a good friend as well, I classify him as a good friend, hey, if you want to, try it and ship it after you've tried it. So if you remember, I poured myself a very small dram of Talisker, well, actually, after sipping the little three, five mils, I left the rest in the glass overnight just to see what happens, uh, and I've been doing that quite a bit now, um, especially with very old whiskey, because like I uh, revealed last night, a very well-renowned whiskey writer and speaker said to me, um, long-age whiskey, you have to leave it in the glass at least for every minute it's been aged for. So his theory was, you know, leave it in the glass for at least 30 minutes for because this being a 30-year-old. Well, I left it overnight, much longer than the 30 minutes, and when I noticed that last night, there was a distinct lack of smoky character, which is what uh, Talisker's are sometimes known for. And um, just as I kind of lifted my homemade dark chocolate lid, um, there's actually a lot more smoky character in here today. It's just weird. It's nosing completely different. That sort of marmalade, almost like a mandarin nose is still there, which is bizarre because that's kind of like urban territory, having the mandarin kind of character. But the smoke definitely there. And it <laughs> I like giving weird analogies. It kind of smells oh, very ripe mandarin, like very ripe. Did I say that last night? Very ripe. All right. Very similar on the palate. Mm. Very similar. But on the nose, a lot more smoke. That was bizarre. All right. I'm just going to quick round off the comments. And then I'm going to go, oh, someone's ordered something. Scott has ordered a Glen Goyne. Bravo, buddy. You're going to enjoy it. Trust me. You're going to have a good time with it. It's very nice. Good on you, but all right. What are you guys up to on LinkedIn? Thank you, Andrew. Thanks for your comment, mate. I mean, all this is work of passion in between the cell breaks. <laughs> but I ramble on because I love talking about whiskeys, mate. It's 100% work of passion. Thank you for watching, Scott. And lastly, my Facebook page. What are those crazy people up to? Hey, John Duran. Joining you with the Bormo 18, mate. Love the Bormo. Beautiful. And John, I'm going to call you. We have <laughs> stuff to talk about. Hopefully you have found yourself a better whiskey glass by now. Not drinking out of a... Uh, a tea glass, I don't know what you call it, mate, coffee, it's not a whiskey glass. Or better yet, I'll just send you a proper whiskey glass so I don't have to see you suffering like that. 
I'm going to go. This is getting a bit long. Thank you for watching. If you're liking the content on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. If you're an APM, leave me a comment. More than happy to answer any of your questions. If you're on LinkedIn, please stay being awesome. And if you're on Facebook, I'll see you crazy bastards later on. Let it go.